All right, today is the day, and we have here the lower control arm of the front suspension, and it is uh, had a little bit of problems. Um, when we pressed the ball joint in, we warped a little bit of it, kind of a sign that I don't have enough strength in that area. Also, the pickup point for the push rod in that is not optimum, and anyway, I want to redesign that, and that just seems to be the way things go, building a prototype. Anyway, we are gonna fix that in today's video, but before we get to that, I wanted to go into a new contest we have today. Well, not really a contest of anything you can enter, but we just hit 500 subscribers. Now on YouTube, they send me a notification when I get subscribers, but it seems that that is not all the subscribers because every time I get a notification, I can go into YouTube and see that there's three or four, maybe seven or eight, or whatever the number is that have subscribed, but I only get notification of some of those. So the only thing I could do is I went into YouTube after I hit 100, 500 subscribers and waited to see who showed up. And that 500 subscriber, if that was 500, we're just gonna count them as they are, was Calvet309. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up something. I've got a little project coming up that I need to do some laminations in some flat panels. I'm gonna make a little gift for Calvet309 so if Calvet, you, he, she, whoever it is, I don't know if that name means anything, but if Calvet309 would go to the channel on YouTube and go to the tab over about, and there's a place there where you can direct message me, um, let me know if you've seen this on the video. Anyway, I will be sending you something. I'm also gonna send something to a Trent Hill Trent has been following the build for about a year, or maybe just slightly more than a year even. Trent found me because he is in the process of getting ready to build his own car and thought that following this channel would be very apropos in uh, seeing what was going on in the world of supercar builds. So I'm gonna be sending off a little gift, nothing ex too exciting, don't get too excited out there, but gonna send these little gifts off to Calvet309 and Trent Hill. Okay, one more thing before we jump into that suspension arm. I wanted to mention also that at the end of each video now, I'm going to try to add a little tip or best practice, something that goes along with that video of the day in the fabrication world or something that you can look into or some special insight that I might've just overlooked or not talked about. I'm gonna cover that at the end of each video. So make sure you stay tuned through the whole video to catch that little tip or practice of the trade. Anyway, let's go work on that control arm, see what we did. So I took a little different approach on this set of A-arms than the last ones. And one of the things I wanted to do was uh, make it a little more aerodynamic. So I'm gonna go with um, tubing, but I'm gonna slice the tubing in half and only use half a tube on top of a plate. That'll give me a bottom flat surface and the strength of the tubing. So just went out the back, took the plasma cutter and sliced the piece of uh, one and three quarter chromoly tubing. And to go with that tubing you see here sliced, I need some smaller sections to hold the little weld bungs for the threaded inserts. And found that uh, my little notches in my plates were not quite deep enough to allow those uh, little pieces of pipe to uh, sit low enough for the larger chromoly to fit over the top of it. So I need to jump back in there, take a grinder, and at least just bevel them down so that, that tube would uh, fit in there. And once that grinding was done, put a little bevel on it, it indeed made it uh, wide enough for that little piece of tubing to sit down in there. There you go, see now the tubing fits right nice and tight against the plate. So now we're gonna take our little weld-in bungs and uh, get those fixed. These little welded inserts work so well that uh, it's hard to imagine doing this in any other way. I can imagine uh, trying to uh, machine a solid piece out and thread it, which would be a nightmare job. So, with the beauty of these uh, welded inserts, go ahead and uh, weld them up. Why we'll have them free? It's easy to roll them around, get the weld done. But before we weld them to the plate, we're gonna get all of our upper 
one and three quarter chromoly all cut to shape. Now I'm going to cut these into little angles to match the edge of my base plate. So the angles where they come together is not very critical at all. So I'm just kind of uh, guesstimating that and marking it out with my uh, soapstone. The only thing I have to do is just to make sure that my piece of half tubing follows, like I said, the edge of that base plate perfectly. And once I get it following that edge and get my uh, joints trimmed down to where I get a good fit, then I'll be ready to tack and weld them to the plate. Like I said, take out the burrs, clean at the edges. Now I do know the end of this pipe needs to terminate at a certain distance from my uh, bolt in ball joint. So mark it where that termination needs to be, put that piece of tubing on there and then kind of transfer that up onto the tubing. And then of course, the magic of video editing, you don't get to see me run off to the chop saw and cut those down, but they're all trimmed up to the right lane. Everything fits good. Just gonna clean up all my edges so I can get a good weld joint. So now it's time to go back to those smaller pieces of tubing, weld them to my base plate before we put the chromoly over the top of it. This is where the ultimately all the strength comes from in this A-arm is this connection between these uh, welded bungs, their little piece of auxiliary tubing, the threaded rod for the urethane bushing in that joint travels through that tube. So once they're all welded in place, good welds on the front and the back, I can now kind of encapsulate or cover it up with the stiffening of the chromoly tubing. Now at time, assemble it all on the base plate, tack it in place. Same with the second side, just a repeat. They come together. I have a little half circle that's been cut out. Now the base plate, the half circles and the connection for my push rod, that's all been water jet cut. Now here's another little piece that, uh, not too much description in this, just the piece of uh, sheet metal that matches the thickness of the base plate. I put a 90 degree bend on it and it fits in between the two chromoly tubes, kind of ties it crosswise. And the last thing of course here is to uh, put my mounts for my uh, push rod. Get a little piece of the bushing out of one of the push rods, clamp that between with a bolt, keep my spacing, tack weld each of the corners so they don't move. And then tip the thing up on its edge so I get a little better access and uh, do my final welds. And then once I've worked that cup all the way across those things, this thing is pretty much done. Just need to go clean it up, powder coat it. So there you go. We have our suspension control arms all complete. Now all we need to do is get some hubs built so we can tie all those pieces together and hang some wheels on there. That'll be coming up in the future. So hope you come back and see that episode, but thanks for stopping by today. All right, here we are with this new thing I'm gonna try, this little segment at the end of each video. Um, like I said, gonna be little tips or things uh, commonly known in the trades maybe. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is call this um, Jay's Super Suggestions. So these are going to be more of my suggestions rather than any kind of a definitive answer on anything. Just things that I've learned over the years and maybe even just on this project at the moment. So like we said, we're going to focus each of these little segments at the end kind of based around what we talked about in the video itself. 
And so of course today, since we did some welding on this uh, control arm, we're gonna talk about welding and particularly welding chromoly 4130 steel and welding it to mild steel, joining the two together. Now the first thing, first one of those suggestions I'm gonna give you or talk about is that of uh, one that's very popular in discussions about welding 4130 and that is um, heating the metal up before you weld. And my suggestion is uh, don't. There is no real reason to do this when you're doing smaller components. If you're going to be doing something really critical like race applications or something that is critical to life and limb, I suppose you could then consider it. And those things are usually things like roll bars and that kind of thing. Now, the reason I say don't do it is because if you want to weld a roll bar system, you need to heat it evenly. And the only way to do that is in an oven. If you try to use a torch, you're just going to be heating a localized, which is the same thing as just welding on it in the first place. So like I said, you probably just skip heating it. Um, even the, the manufacturer level of the metals, they suggest that you, there's no heat required in thinner tubing. So probably the things you might be doing is that. Um, so like aircraft frames, they don't use heat treating. But like I said, just skip the heat. Um, now with, with that heating and skipping that heating, there are some suggestions that tie that all together. And the first one being the second suggestion, if you're welding um, chromoly and mild steel together, or just chromoly to chromoly, never weld anything that is uh, maybe a 30% increase in mass or thickness of materials. So let's say you have a uh, eighth inch or an 095 tube, something lightweight, you don't ever wanna weld that to a half inch thick plate. There's just too much difference in the mass and the heat is gonna be pulled off by the heavier plate and cause the thin wall to cool rapidly. And that'll cause stress cracks in that weld. Okay, so number three suggestion is that you use chromoly when you're trying to achieve strength in stiffness. Now, of course, there's different ways to describe strength and one of those being in stiffness. And that's where chromoly really shines is in stiffness. And if you're trying to re reach strength in um, some inductility where you want the material to be a little bit forgiving and maybe to deform under an impact, that's where the mild still comes into play. So in this project, we use the chromoly in the tubes because we do want to have it stiff this way direction, but we also want this piece to be able to bend in an impact rather than to break. If you break, then you lose complete control and we're hoping to be able to just keep this into a bent mode where we could limp or be able to get off the road or something of that nature. So using chromoly, always think about it as being in stiffness and mild steel being ductile, its strength is in being able to give a little bit. And they can be added together or work together. Like I said, we have the rigidity from the chromoly and the ductility, the flexibility for the mild steel to tie between them. Now the fourth suggestion kind of ties back into what we talked about with um, materials of different size and the cooling going on between them, because that is the key in chromoly. Since we're not heating it up, we're just allowing the heat to saturate from our weld. We do want it to cool down slow as possible. That doesn't mean you have to do anything to keep or prolong the cooling, just that you don't want to try to put it under a fan. And for heaven's sake, don't put it into water to quench it it that will indeed induce some serious stresses in the welds and our fifth and final suggestion in today's video is the use of the filler rod now when you're welding chromoly and mild steel together i would recommend that you use the er70 s2 filler rod now the 80 series filler rod is probably a little bit stronger but it's just not quite as forgiving as the 70 series rod and that is what I would suggest in using, especially when you're combining these two materials together. There's Jay's super suggestions for this week. Now I'm trying this kind of as a new pilot to see how this thing fits into my videos and my workflow. And there's lots of different ways I could have done this. Um, try not to make this channel a tutorial. It's more of just a follow along and see what I'm doing in the shop. And I don't want these uh, suggestion things to become 
more tutorial. I want them just to be um, insights that I have as I've been working on the project and things that I might have learned in the past that I think are apropos into directly related to what we talked about in the video. Anyway, let's see what goes on next week and a week after that and see how this little episodes go. But glad you stopped by and watch this video. Come back and see us again.